Yo, yo, what's good? Back again with your boy J. Chris. Let's see where we go with this one. Let's see what comes up, what comes out. So one of the things with these body snatchers, what he's getting at is how thought is likened to snatching the body or snatching the awareness away. And I kind of wanted to throw in my two cents, or is it my sixth cents, or is it, no wait, how many do I have? But uh, one of the things he talks about is we don't know the origin of, of where the thought comes from. And I mean, yes, whenever you're first starting out and first starting to understand how shit works for real, for yourself, releasing the belief systems and the BS, diving into gnosis, experiencing for yourself, learning to listen, quieting the mind, spending time within the stillness, within the center point, the monad, Then you kind of, you will start to open yourself up to certain frequencies, certain vibrations, certain types of information that filters down through of where it originates from, the origin point. So we're going to ha just happen upon certain things that help us understand experiences that we may have had or things that we may be trying to understand and understand but don't have the words for. We may happen upon someone else's words that helps us to piece together a more accurate picture of what's really going on to more accurately describe the, the essence that cannot be described. <laughs> So the origin point of thought of ideas and first we have to realize the context here. He's talking about thoughts that do not serve, or they, they serve a, a specific purpose, but it's to drag the individual down, to drag them down into the depths of uh, desecration and self-destruction, or just to throw someone off. to uh, catch someone out of the groove. But yes, these have 
everything has an origin point, and yes, it's going to be very slippery to grab a hold of to try to realize where the origin point is, especially once you start getting into the subtler realms of beingness, such as thought, which is That word is a is <laughs> trying to describe something that happens, uh, which is why <laughs> it's just trying to describe a function that has been manipulated. Uh, diluted, I guess you could say which is just pure imagery. So taking the quintessential essence, which is the image, uh, dreaming your dreaming life in creation, being awake within the dream, and then taking a part of that away, attaching words and labels to it, and then calling that thing thought. But that initial detachment from the original essence, you've already split something into that. Or you, it's, it's kind of like you've taken a ghost from the original. Thing. And then you call the ghost the actual thing. And this is just a nice representation of the trick. Tricking people into believing that the thing being held on high is the actual truth or the thing to pay attention to when in reality it's just a distraction it's another illusion in the maya of the mind so when we're getting into things like body snatchers or uh, where are these thoughts coming from You may come along in your path where you start to dive into things or have things just happen about. Where you look into things of a predatory nature, such as... Uh, Don Juan and uh, the teachings of Don Juan uh, the whole story and how he describes the the pred predator of the mind, uh, of the human mind, and then you can dive into like Indian philosophy, philosophy and things like uh, dark occult forces, um, Things of this nature. Basically things behind the scenes that are instigating through subtle influence. Preying upon those that choose to pray to something outside of themselves.
So yes, part of realizing how much control and power you have is learning to choose how you engage thought. So if you're even still having these experiences where you're having uh, negative thoughts or whatever come into play, that that should be, I mean, it's always going to be a reflection of the inner state of the individual's body. So if you're struggling with cycles and patterns of going through stages to where you get in a more depressed kind of stage. Yes, everyone's going to go through this and everyone has their ups and downs, but whenever it gets really bad, that needs to be uh, seen for what it is and understood that you have blockages inside of you, inside of your body, and once those are cleared away, then you won't get stuck in, or stagnant in that place of depression. You won't be depressed because you'll be able to flow out of it just as easily as you moved into it. That's one of the things that was mentioned here as well, is it's kind of a gradual process a lot of the times that we don't realize that we're kind of steadily moving down, moving down, and then we get back into that loop. And we're like, how the fuck did we get here? And when we forget about that gradual slope, that, that, nice loop down, 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 and then we started looping, and looping, and I'm like, what the fuck? And we pop out. And then we, we forget about that origin point that made us slide. <laughs> the shoots and the ladders, right? We, we forget about the causality of, of the shoot to where it began because it's gradual and it's com a compounded thing that happens. It's kind of like... Uh, one thing after another happens, and then we get caught in that cycle again. And then the latter is whenever we lift ourselves up. So we we see, we tend to pay more attention to the latter, ladder, how we, the rise, the climb, that we can bring ourselves out of it. And then once we're out of it, we forget about how we got there. And so because we and this is a micro-macro thing, individual and collective, because we don't pay attention to how we got to where we are with our past, then we are going to, you know, you're doomed to repeat it. As is, as, <laughs> is, oh, I can't think of the words words right now, right? <laughs> Communication right now. It's very wonky. So yeah, that was one thing I wanted to mention, touch upon before I started playing some of the stuff. <sighs> we'll see how far we get. Uh, Another big theme is like uh, Christianity with this and the Jesus theme. And then also, from my personal experience, I am. Uh, having this weird engagement with an individual that uh, not only is a perfect representation of a. Um, a Christian in the sense that uh, they are they are the exoteric Christian and that they anything that uh, makes them or causes them to go within or to really start to question the foundations of something uh, it scares them 
and they move away from the fear and they go back to their, you know, exoteric, comfortable, uh, religious vibe. So that's the kind of person I'm talking about. And this person is also, uh, one of the, um, things that all of these types of people, uh, any kind of religious background, whenever they are caught up in the exoteric, uh, and they're also caught up in fear of looking inside of themselves, because then they will have to face up to all the bullshit, and that, that is a scary thing to do, to finally do, but I mean, if you don't do that, then you're going to be continuously living in fear. So, uh, the other thing that all those people have in common is that they are incredibly hypocritical. They preach one thing, and then they do the opposite, and then whenever you call them out on it, they are unable, it's quite literally, they are unable to see what they are doing. It's it's really quite a, quite the thing to witness to bear witness to. Um, it's very uncomfortable to be around, and uh, once you realize that you can you can only do so much for a certain individual, then uh, you have to I don't know, do what you got to do, but. Um, Yeah, it, it, it's fucking crazy. But also, uh, <clears throat> and this is kind of like a, a, a level up <laughs> from from the hypocrisy, which is when I say up, I I really mean like a, a, a higher level of degradation, a higher level of. Uh, of a uh, psychopath is that um, this type of person um, is adept at tricking people into thinking that they can think for themselves and then once that person falls for it and starts to open up to them They, they, that's when they really try to, try to hook you with, with their BS and, and religious dogma. And, uh, the, the true nature really comes out after you, you kind of take the bait of, oh, you're, you, okay, you're actually a human being and you do actually question things. And, and then, uh, so with this person, and I've mentioned this before and like, another video, I think, about this specific individual. I... Well, first of all, um, we got into some nice conversations about... Uh, just about um, very, you know, simple things that you can... that, that we all experience, you know... Uh, Certain types of emotion, uh, love and truth, and uh, you know we found a uh, a common ground where we could both uh, stand on and start to uh, build from, and that was nice. And then I, I mean maybe it was my mistake for, and this is also something that I oftentimes. Now, especially, because I've gone through it so much, I, I tend to not uh, give people the information that maybe, hmm, how to put this, it's kind of like you have to baby feed them, spoon feed them uh, truth, or you have to give them little baby steps, uh, stones to to 
work from. They have to find that path for themselves. Like, yes, you can give someone the, the, the truth, whatever that is, you know. You can, you can show someone, you know, um, the, you can lead them to the watering hole, but, like, they have to be the ones that actually drink from the fountain of youth. The fountain of wisdom. Because otherwise, they're just going to see that information, and it's going to be more on an exoteric understanding for them until they have that thirst for knowledge. And then that same information they will come back to in a new perception, and in a new light, and a new awareness. And then they will be able to absorb past the exoteric into the esoteric, into the deeper love meanings and layers which is what I was trying to help this person understand, <laughs> is the exoterics and the esoterics of the Bible. And of course, you know, right then and there, like, once, once you start to shake people's belief systems, especially when it comes to the Bible, Immediately, you will see their things come out, and all of a sudden, you are the devil. <laughs> you are you are the occult because you engage things like dreams. Oh my god! Like even that, even things like engaging subtle realms. Like that, nope, that's that's of the devil. It's like Jesus, Jesus, dude. No, not not your Jesus, no, because he, that's, and this is also something that maybe we'll get into a little bit about the, the Jesus uh, image and character, uh, the fictitious creation that is Jesus. But as with uh, egregors and tulpas, these creations, yes, they may, may be fictitious and created, but if you haven't already realized what you keep perpetuating in your mind, it becomes more and more manifest. And it can become very real, depending upon your perception. And whenever you have an image and you have a compound thought focused on an image, that's... Well, that does bring things to life. And that that's what's happened with uh, religions and any kind of uh, old story. Um, there's a lot of forgotten stories and forgotten... Uh, you can call them gods. They're not. They're just images that we created in the past for a specific purpose. And then the fall happened, and we forgot. And then a certain select group of people w were made privy about these creations that that were still still existed, were still very real in in different realms and modes of perception. But because they weren't engaged anymore, they were just kind of sitting there, waiting to be reignited. So, once these people learned about this, they decided, how can we use this for our benefit? How can we use this to control people? Well, we will attach our own images to those, distracting from the true purpose of the creation to begin with, get people to focus on 
the distracted, the illusory image that was created, which they control. And then people are messing with forces that, and ultimately they, they were as well, the, the priests that, that decided to do this. But they didn't truly understand what they were what they were messing with or doing, but they understood enough. That they could control people with these images. They could trick them. They could manipulate uh, reality and, and come up with things such as time. And just all of these made-up words that are not actually, um, they don't have any kind of foundation in uh, true reality. They have, they keep being engaged and recycled over and over because of this uh, system, the indoctrination system that we've been brought up in. This is, this is where it stemmed from. The people that knew what they what the fuck they were doing in the first place. <sighs> so it's not even a question of is Jesus real or not, because it's it's past that point. Whenever you have an image to where enough people are engaging that image, it's very much real. It doesn't matter what what it is. Yes, it, it's very real, but what are the origins of it? What are the esoterics of it? What are the... underlying foundations of it? So I'm not uh, I'm not entertaining it, but uh, uh, let me switch real quick about your topic because it is kind of a you know a perfect topic for me. Um, as far as as Jesus, okay, Jesus to me, Jesus is very. If you believe in Jesus in your heart, then he is very real. Understand? Okay. Now I and ask for Jesus for many years, I mean, we're talking decades upon decades, to be present. Okay, yeah, and like I said, any, any kind of tulpa or compound creation to where it's constantly being engaged, that's, it can be, this is getting into, uh, magic and being able to summon energies that it's it's think about wi-fi and all the different levels and different waves of information all constantly around us aren't we summoning that into a a localized and focused point whenever we get on the web, access it through a computer. It's the same thing with summoning rituals or even just religious ceremony. And yes, you know, ceremony is it can be a very uh, personalized and intimate thing and very sacred it's all about intent so when someone's intent is you know to, for the sacred then 
that's going to be the manifestations. When someone's intent is for the opposite, then they're going to have different manifestations. in my life to show up to guide me and it just felt as if that moment has never come so I went beyond Jesus so to speak and I went straight to the source for me. and that's that's beautiful right there um, and that's what I've been saying go go to the epicenter go to the origin point the source and uh, he said he doesn't like to use the word God which it's awesome. It's fine. Like, move beyond words. Whenever you just experience it for what it is, you don't need words anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, until you find someone that can commune with you on on that level beyond words, then we still need words to commune, right? Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and say, um, because this also reminded me of a time that I actually forgot, uh, which was when I was, uh, quite young, silly young kiddo, and I was, you know, one of those kids that experienced, uh, a lot of weird, weird shite, because who knows why, because I was a kid, because most kids experience weird shit, but you know, they listen to the adults, or the adults, and they slowly but surely are indoctrinated and convince themselves that it was just their imagination. It wasn't really real. But I still remember. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, actually, it, it would be nice to convince myself or even of even on a short term i mean but I, but i never did i never could because the, those experiences were too real even the dreams or not i mean the nightmares that i would have uh those were incredibly real real and vivid but you know if you can remember the times of whenever you were a child, uh, those experiences are going to be very pure and should be very vivid, very raw. But yeah, I, w I would see uh, all kinds of things uh, outside the windows of the home I was in. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not very pleasant things either. Which is just probably a reflection of the kind of environment I was in. Not very pleasant. Suppressive. Depressive. Incredibly so. Incredibly so. To the point where I, I need... It, it, it helps me to uh, remind myself that I came out of that. That I survived it. Because uh, even at a young age, I yeah, at a very young age, I I, I didn't want to uh, continue living without uh, experiencing love um, from my so-called loved one loved ones. Things were just so fucked up that at an extremely young age, I, I wanted out. <laughs> and I contemplated that at a very young age. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> the uh, So yeah, kudos to me for not not giving in. Oh, okay. And another memory that, that sprung about because of what I was originally going to talk about is 
uh, that time whenever I was very young uh, and had that kitchen knife to my heart. Uh, there was there was something else that that came into play. Um, maybe it was just another form of me, but uh, it it washed away um, all of those feelings that I was having, and uh, you know I was able to just do what I needed to do in that moment and just break down and cry and release. But uh, that energy was something that stayed with me. Uh, throughout um, quite a bit of my life, um, even t into my early adulthood, uh, and that energy was like whenever I was in extreme states of um, fever or some kind of sickness. Um, that specific energy would show itself. I think in the last video I mentioned it was like that spherical being. Uh, this is what, what would present itself in, in the fever states. And that first uh, interaction that, that I can remember right now, recall, recollect, uh, which was whenever I was in the kitchen at a very young age. Um, I don't remember seeing anything. I think it's because I wasn't really in a fever state or in a state where my body was really in jeopardy, <laughs> even though it was about to be. Uh, this was just like, yeah, just like, um, a concentrated, uh, focused energy of love that uh, just just poured over me because I was in such a such a dark place of uh, loneliness that I don't know. I'm not gonna. Throw the, <laughs> throw the word angel on there, but I mean, that's, in essence, the same type of energy. So yeah, when I was very young, I... I was also at a state, stage, even, even at that uh, young age, where I was beginning to play with um, controlling my dreams, and then also, uh, controlling imagery, um, having things appear, and so I, I basically did a summoning ritual, uh, not realizing what I was doing, and called forth this image of, uh, Jesus, and, um, proclaimed it, uh, willed it to manifest uh, right before me and it did uh, slowly in a manner where, where it, it slowly embodied to kind of test my response <laughs> and uh, as that was happening I'm like nope okay <laughs> I'm out that's good So yeah, like, this is why little kids, they, they have, you know, imaginary friends, and they're, they're very psychic, depending upon their environment and what they are able to engage and be encouraged to engage, or allowed even. They're open. And so they're able to do things that are natural. I mean, you can call it supernatural, but yeah, it's it's very super as in very, very natural. But it becomes uncommon because we slowly become indoctrinated into 
encapsulating the mind, encapsulating the essence and the beingness of what it really means to be a human. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with my <laughs> that little weird thing. Continue. Spiritual guidance and knowledge and wisdom and connection and protection and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's where I receive what I'm looking for in spirituality as opposed to Jesus. Now, I know Jesus is part of it and the Holy Trinity. But, like I said, I, I requested that energy or entity or that whatever you want to call it to, to come into my existence, to fill my And how this happens for everyone is it begins, the, the origin, the essence, where it originates from is the intent. And whenever you combine your intent with strong pure heartfelt emotion you can call that prayer or you can call that sending focused focalized love energy out just into the all that is you don't send it up you don't send it down it just it, it vibrates it's like you are the epicenter of this earthquake this love earthquake and it the, it's like the waves ripple out from you and the universe or God or whatever you want to term it responds and the kind of response you get and how quickly you're able to perceive the response and the message is dependent upon the clarity, the heartfelt connection of the intent. Oh yeah, um, but I mean, a huge factor to play within all this is allowing the message to present itself to you, not getting so wrapped up in your mind that you're like, oh, I constantly need to figure it out, I need to figure this out, I need to figure this out, because then you're just, you're going to keep wrapping yourself tighter and tighter around your constructs that you have created. You're, you're trying to find something within a boxed and encapsulated state of mind because you're still you're you're wound up within thought and words and the limited nature of that to where you're not able to release and let go allow the messages to come in and they they will do so in sometimes in the most curious ways, the most unexpected ways. For whenever you're able to take a step back, then maybe you can see the deeper understandings, the deeper nature of, of the origin points, of everything, of, of everything that's going on around you why things are happening the way they are, why people are reacting and responding the way they are, why the weather is the way it is, where are the origin points? Yes, in truth, you are the origin point, but also, everyone is the origin point, so... The compound collected collective whenever that is called as in grouped up and able to be manipulated and controlled then you find yourself in a world like into what we are in today.
where there is mass confusion, yes, there is also, it's both polarities are amped up, like I've been saying, I've been saying that for a while, that both sides are, are getting amped up and being amped up, and sometimes one will, you know, take more, uh, precedence over the other, and of course, it's, it's up to the individual to choose what they want to engage. So I also just wanted to say, like, this is why a lot of the times I am, um, and this is something I've been, you know, uh, accused of throughout all my life is, you're so vague. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is true. And there are times whenever you know you need to have direct, um, more exactitude <laughs> of uh, directions towards something. But then there are times where people. You need to realize that people need to figure things out for themselves. So you can, like I said, you can show someone the way, but they have to walk it. Like, part of the truth for them, and yes, you can say, like, their truth, but that's, it, it's, there is one truth, but then, you know, everyone has their perception of that truth. They have to walk that truth themselves. So, in that, um, dynamic then yes it's their truth because it's their experience of the truth but there's just truth and then everyone's experience of that so if that's what you want to say is my truth this is my truth well, what it, it's just truth and if it's not then it, it'll be evident it's not yours <laughs> it's not yours it's not mine it's just it's it's your experience of of it So, part of the reason why I am so vague is because I recognize that part of the answer, quote-unquote answer, for people's queries or questions is not just me, it's not just the answer or the you know, uh, finally coming to understand something for what it is, and that's what it was the whole time. Well, yes, but you are a part of that, though. So, you are a part of the equation. So that's why I'm so vague a lot of the times, is because I'm, I'm hinting at, you know, things that you can touch upon and, and start to, you know, bite down on, so that you could engage that and walk that yourself because it's, it's you are part of the answer and solution your own solution if that makes sense it made more sense when I <laughs> thought it out originally and then ah, when I tried to put it into words So yes, there there's a time to be direct. There's a there's a time to be more elusive. <laughs> and it just depends upon the subject being engaged. Uh, how far you really want to go down the rabbit hole. If you just want to get to a certain stopping point, then I can give you directions to that. I can give you 
very specific directions to that little, you know, uh, truck stop, if you want to call it that. That little resting point that you can climb a couple of steps and then, you know, rest there and maybe become comfortable with it. Maybe just even stop there because most people, they go so far and they just stop. And that's the case with, uh, you know, religious folk. A lot of times they don't even do uh, very much uh, deep work at all. They just listen to, you know, their peers and parents or the people that they're surrounded with, their community of uh, fellow indoctrinated people. And they just uh, become comfortable with that. And they become comfortable with their fear. And pushing away anything that makes them face what's dark and deep inside. What must be faced. If you really want to climb out of the gunk and the bullshit. If you want to release the fear, if you want to release the dis-ease, if you want to release what you thought, what you was brought up to believe was real, you got to go into the dark. Go into the, those deep places inside of yourself. That you have yet to shine the light of your own awareness on. And so they still have a pull upon you. A subtle subconscious influence. Until you move into the fear. Into the pain. Into the darkness. You see it for what it is. And then it's not dark anymore. It's not what it once was. It no longer has influence over you. Move into the esoteric nature of your reality. Engage it. Feel it. Release into it. Allow the messages, the massages. Allow the messages to be massaged to be slowly integrated. Cultivate your dedication towards this. And eventually, <laughs> you don't need to go and meditate because you realize what that word really means. And you're just, you're always there. That's the point of meditation, is to realize that you're always fucking meditating. You're always doing all things in all ways. It's just, are you aware of it or not? Because if you're not, then maybe things can pull you in certain directions because you're not aware of what you are actually doing to yourself, what you are actually creating. So yes, wakey wakey, wake up indeed, but that doesn't mean that you need to stop dreaming. Become awake within the dream. Realize that you're dreaming yourself. 
you're dreaming your reality and creation. So let's start dreaming a world that is dedicated to truth. Not my truth, not your truth, just truth. And yes, we're all going to have our own perceptions of that truth, and then eventually we can come to better understand what that truth is by understanding multiple perceptions, multiple sides and angles of the angels. and the demons demonstrating this multi-hued full-spectrum reality full-spectrum awareness you are a hue man woe man after all so experience all of the multiple angles and aspects that you have access to wakey wakey <laughs> to what you are doing become the wakeful dreamer and dream on peace